And good evening from the Lincoln KY World Headquarters in downtown Covington. I am Michael Monks, and this is the Frankfurt Link Live. As always, I'm joined by Link NKY politics and government reporter Mark Payne, who joins us from the One in KY house in Frankfurt. Mark, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Our conversation for the most part this evening will be about House Bill 9, legislation related to charter schools. Northern Kentucky plays a key role in this legislation as there is talk that a charter school could be placed in one of the urban areas here in Northern Kentucky. We're gonna talk about that legislation and more. Tonight, we're joined by Ludlow Independent Schools Superintendent Mike Borchers, who will be with us here momentarily. And then later, State Senators Damon Thayer, the Republican of Georgetown, and Chris McDaniel, the Republican of Taylor Mill, will be here to talk about that legislation and other pieces of legislation as the 2022 Kentucky General Assembly legislative session begins to wrap up. I want to make an editorial note that Superintendent Tony Watts of Newport Schools was invited and confirmed to be on this program. We had a technical error in the distribution of this Zoom link, and that is my fault. I take responsibility for Superintendent Watts of Newport not being able to join us here this evening after all, but we do have Superintendent Mike Borchers to talk about urban education, House Bill 9, and more. He'll be with us momentarily. To start with, Mark Payne, let's talk about House Bill 9. This got a lot of attention in the two largest newspapers in Kentucky, the Louisville Courier Journal and the Lexington Herald Leader. They had some interesting perspectives on the possibility of a charter school being located in Newport specifically, though some of that reporting seemed more speculative than fact-based. And local developer Bill Butler, chairman and founder of Corporex, had some choice words for those outlets, their coverage of the issue and their perception of him and his motivations in supporting charter schools and school choice in Kentucky. We will note that Bill Butler is a member of the Link Media Governing Board. That governing board does not influence editorial decisions at Link NKY. Uh, Mark Payne, tell us about House Bill 9. It passed narrowly in the state house and then passed a little more comfortably in the state Senate. What does this legislation do? Yeah, so this would create a funding pathway for charter schools. The initial legislation passed in 2017, but it didn't create a long-term funding uh, pathway for the uh, for charter schools. And so what this does is it would fund them um, for the long term. Um, it's pretty controversial. As you mentioned, Michael, um, one of the sites uh, that it has been mentioned um, in Northern Kentucky is Newport at the Ovation site. And it's created a lot of controversy. We saw a lot of controversy online last week about where exactly the school would go. Um, we did find uh, at link that according to Newport Industrial Revenue Bonds, the Ovation site couldn't get a school. So well, before, before we dive into that part of this, because that is an interesting component in this conversation about charter schools, specifically in Northern Kentucky. But when we think broadly about House Bill 9, apparently there are only a couple of locations in the state that would be identified as part of the charter pilot program. Jefferson County, where Louisville is, and here in Northern Kentucky. What do we know about why these two areas were targeted by this bill? Uh, well, for the it would be in the West End of Louisville, um, which is in the Jefferson County um, Public School, um, we don't have a lot of reasoning for why those two places were chosen. Um, you know, obviously with Lexington and Louisville being such large metros, um, it makes sense in Louisville, um, but it doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense in Northern Kentucky. And I think that that's where the, a lot of folks were questioning, you know, why Northern Kentucky? Why is Northern Kentucky involved in this legislation? You know, who's behind it from Northern Kentucky? And when I did a little digging last week, uh, you know, we did find that Bill Butler did, has been lobbying um, for educational purposes in um, the legislature this term, but there aren't any specific bills. There's nothing that says Bill Butler, um, you know, put lobbying money towards House Bill 9. Um, so some of it's still up in the air. Some of it's still speculation as to why Northern Kentucky would be getting a charter school. This bill passed very narrowly in the House. One of the key votes in ensuring its passage was Republican State Representative Kim Banta. She of Fort Mitchell. 
And she is a career educator prior to electoral politics. And we do know that part of her new district, District 63, when she, uh, if she's reelected and serves District 63 again next year, the district is a little different and it does include more of an urban presence. So she will represent Ludlow and parts of downtown Covington as well. And, and the coverage of House Bill 9 in the Courier Journal and the Herald Leader, both articles appear to have been motivated uh, after a series of tweets that can connected a lot of dots, either uh, actually or conspiratorially. Kim Banta is married to an executive at Corporex. And the insinuation was that Corporex wants to put a charter school at the Ovation site in Newport. Obviously, we have seen a lot of movement at the Ovation site in Newport over the past couple of years. A new music venue is open. There's a parking garage, a hotel, and there are residences on the way as well. But that coverage, Mark, and in the downstate large legacy media outlets neglected a very important fact about charter schools and the Ovation development. Tell us about it. Correct. So when the ovation site was going in um there are industrial reg revenue bonds for the project showing that when newport independent school district approved them the school board added a stipulation that a school can't be built on that site uh and the uh it reads the city shall not permit a private or charter school to be constructed or operate upon the ovation site so there's definitely not a school going in on that site there is some area around there that folks have also speculated about that a school could could go in. Um, I have not seen any proof of that. Um, so um, I'm not for sure. I went walking and running through there last week just, just to kind of look and see where a school could potentially go in. And I didn't see any room for one. So yeah, it, there's still a lot up in the air. The coverage of this prompted Corporex and Bill Butler to issue a statement about this. And uh, Butler said in that press release, quote, the mission is to provide an alternative pre-K through level eight school with an eye to two goals. A, to keep young professional families from moving out of Covington and Newport when their children reach school age. And B, to provide an opportunity for less hopeful children of the urban sector who can achieve at a higher level than the broader public school system simply cannot. He went on to say, quote, I have promised to contribute a large sum of money for such a program, provided that it is a state-of-the-art facility that will also be additive to the infrastructure landscape in our urban sector. Butler went on to say in this statement, whether charter schools as legislative will work for us or not, I want it to be known that I am in favor of school choice legislation to the extent it can be accomplished within our Kentucky constitution, including scholarship support programs and voucher systems. We in Kentucky need to get on board with the rest of the country where this is already common practice. But as it relates to Ovation, this is what Corporex pointed out in their news release. Ovation is a high density development located two levels atop a parking structure involving 1,000 multi-story residential units, three hotels, three office buildings, and a music venue. School design requires a large horizontal footprint and would likely be no more than two stories tall, requires gymnasiums, libraries, and multi-purpose spaces. The school is simply not feasible either physically or financially in a development like Ovation. And Corporex went on to say that while Butler has been individually supporting a concept for a private urban academy with a flexible and challenging curriculum for the urban river cities areas of Northern Kentucky, it is not physically possible to place such a school at the Ovation site. After the revelation that the IRB, the Industrial Revenue Bonds, which is a funding mechanism for a lot of these large developments that are happening across the river cities, it included that contingency approved by the Newport Board of Education that there be no private or charter school on the Ovation site. Did we hear any updates from the Herald Leader or the Courier Journal? Did it change the characterization of Representative Banta's participation in the legislation? Uh, I have not seen any updates from them. I did talk to Representative Banta after some of that information came out, and, and she obviously um, you know, wanted to let Link know that she wasn't um, influenced by anything in particular. And um, I'm grabbing a quote from her really quick. Um, but yeah, but she, she definitely. But she just 
she she is saying basically that uh, you know of course her husband works at Corp Rex, but she uh, she does not see that she is uh, expected to make any financial benefit from the approval of a possible charter school somewhere in Newport or possibly in Kentucky. Correct. And with those revenue bonds showing that there wasn't going to be anything at the site, it kind of doesn't necessarily connect it to Representative Vanna. Obviously, her husband is still the vice president of real estate um, and still oversees that project. But with, with a school not going in there, it makes some of that reporting irrelevant. Um, and she said to me, let me tell you what influences my vote. What influences my vote are kids and parents. There's no footprint for a school over there. Yes, my husband is in charge. But if you want to call him, he will tell you I don't do a damn thing for anybody that I don't think is right. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you have. So Representative Van has been focused on, you know, saying that nothing is influencing her vote. She is for school choice. Um, as a public educator, she believes that um, public schools in Kentucky are great. And she thinks even with charter schools, that will continue to shine. We'll talk a bit about why this charter school legislation is designed in such a way to lead some to believe that Kenton County maybe a more likely target for the charter pilot should one ever emerge here in Northern Kentucky. But you are watching the link, the Frankfurt Link live from Link NKY. I'm Michael Monks, joined by Link NKY politics and government reporter Mark Payne. He is in Frankfurt as he has been for the duration of the 2022 Kentucky General Assembly legislative session. We'll bring in our other guests who are joining us live as well this evening. Ludlow Independent Schools Superintendent Mike Borchers is with us. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. We I think my, my first question for you, Superintendent, is where did you get that velvet panther painting? Was it at the 1974 Kenton County Fair? No, sir, that's not a velvet painter, but that is a oil painting from a graduate, Sean Volker. He gave that to me when I became an administrator in the district, and I've had it in every office since. Well, it is a very fine piece of art. And of course, Ludlow is the home of the Panthers. Also joining us again is Senator Chris McDaniel, the Republican of Taylor Mill. Uh, Senator McDaniel, we do appreciate you making some time for us. We know you had a busy evening. So thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me, Michael. I appreciate it. We're going to talk about House Bill 9 first, and then we'll move on to some other legislation. A reminder, we are also expected uh, expecting State Senator Damon Thayer of Georgetown to join us within moments. We'll bring him into the conversation as soon as he arrives. Uh, Superintendent Borchers, I'll start with you. I know educators across the state are watching House Bill 9 closely. It has been approved by both chambers of the General Assembly and now is either waiting a signature or a likely veto from the governor before heading back for a veto uh, override consideration by lawmakers. Your thoughts on this legislation? Well, I think that's became maybe the main topic of the session, but I think first we need to step back and thank Senator McDaniel and all the legislators for the work they put into crafting a budget that really um, improved education moving forward. Um, I know we, we focus on this one topic, but there's been a lot of work and a lot of really good collaboration that's gone on. And I wanted to thank Senator McDaniel and Senator Thayer when he comes on because we can't lose focus of that. That's one topic of the whole educational focus in education. And I don't wanna to lose too much thought on that. So Senator McDaniel, once again, I wanna thank you for everything you've done so far for us. So thank you. Thank you. And, and we will note, uh, Superintendent Borchers, uh, I, I saw a, an announcement from the Senate Republican Caucus, or excuse me, the House Majority Republican Caucus in Frankfurt, who did specifically highlight $23 million in funds for Ludlow Independent Schools yeah. and construction projects that are taking place there. Representative Kim Banta said of this, Ludlow High School is the oldest high school in the state and is in dire need of renovations and repairs. The legislature is clear that we need to strategically invest dollars in ways that strengthen educational opportunities for all, and I'm thankful for the commitment to up updating the school's classrooms. Yes, we're very grateful for that. And, you know, we've had both uh, House and uh, Senate leaders work on that and Senator McDaniel has listened as well. And we want to thank all of them, uh, Representative Bantha, Representative Massey, Sa Representative Santora, all worked from the Northern Kentucky Caucus along with Buddy Wheatley. And then Senator McDaniel also sat down and listened and, and saw how we've been working over the last five or six years to build towards that, Michael. It wasn't something that just happened overnight. Our districts worked really hard to try to get to that. So we've been very appreciative of that. Um, 
you know, a lot of the other things with seek the increase of seek funding, the increase in transportation funding, full day kindergarten. Um, so there's a lot of great things that are going on. And I know you want to talk about Senate Bill 9. So let me first start off by saying for Ludlow, and we've been very honest about this last year when House Bill 563 came about. I, I can't sit here and tell you as Ludlow superintendent, I, I don't agree with school choice because we do. We have 10 MOUs with different districts in Northern Kentucky. So we understand that families in Northern Kentucky should have some choice. And um, with House Bill 563, every every student can have that ability to be, a, be changing through public schools. So we're not arguing school choice. I think that's a very important fact to make sure that we're aware of that school choice is in Northern Kentucky, whether it's Kenton, Campbell, or Boone, especially with 563 that was passed last year with the legislator. I do wish we were able to get a little more clarification from KDE on that because there's still some unanswered questions on that. And uh, we'll work with the KDE to get that finalized. As you talk about charter bill, um, you know, two, two areas of a pilot. Um, with, the, with, with most of our districts, I would compete with any school region, school district in the region. I think we have a quality program and, and I don't have any problems with those things. I think just a couple of things that I would highlight that I have concern is just, you know, we'll take a little bit of local control away when we use the word shall, that we shall allow the, 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 the um, charter school students moving into the charter schools and following some of the funding. You know, state seek, I think that's that's a given. If kids can leave from district to district and take their state seek, that's no problem in my mind either. I think where I get into a little bit of work is I work really hard with our board and they raise local taxes to support some of the things we do here locally. And when things, you know, when kids may leave and take that money with them, that's a concern for us and my board and they're locally elected. So those are just some of the things, Northern Kentucky being a, um, being able to, be the authorizer. You know, I just would want to know if they have the expertise in the K through 12 realm. They're a great edge, you know, post-secondary. Where would they be to support us on that? And, you know, as of today, the charter bills passed. So we're going to have to figure out how to make it work and, and be competitive in the community. And if it changes in the future, we'll, we'll make adjustments as we go on that too. I think Senator McDaniel would tell you that, you know, there may be some topics we tend to disagree on, but I'd say 90% of the things that we talk about in local government and state government, he and I and Senator Thayer would probably agree on, and most superintendents, you know, we want to be fiscally sound. We want to spend our tax dollars properly. So I don't think there's a big gap sometimes like the media likes to portray some things. I do think sometimes we have differences of opinions, but you know that's part of our, our, our democracy where we have a difference of opinion. I respect Senator McDaniel's opinion on things, and I feel he probably respects some of my opinions as well. Well, it's not certainly just media. I, I don't know exactly who you mean by that, but certainly educators uh, held a big rally in Frankfurt this week opposing this bill, and we saw an ethics complaint filed against Representative Banta. So, so we do know that there are plenty in the education field in Kentucky who, who oppose House Bill 9, and we have heard previously from Governor Andy Bashir that he would veto this legislation. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do want to turn to Senator Chris McDaniel, who is joining us again. We appreciate your time, as I said before. Uh, there's a lot about this bill that seems unclear. We, we don't know why Northern Kentucky was singled out along with Louisville to try out this project. We don't know exactly which part of town such an enterprise may land. I think uh, as, Senator, as Superintendent Borchers mentioned, NKU's role in this is, is a bit confusing, I think, for some of us. Uh, and while conceding that this is a bill that emerged from the House before coming to your chamber in, in the Senate and ultimately passing, I'm hopeful that, that you can help us better understand it. Yeah, sure. And, and you know, Michael, I, I want to say a couple of things before we get started. First of all, uh, Superintendent Borchers and, and, and Ludlow really are a, a gem. And, uh, you know, they have taken advantage of opportunities to be engaged, not just locally, but also at a state level. Um, you know, uh, much of the work that happens in Frankfurt, much of the things that inform our opinions happen, happen during interim committees and over the the course of years and developing relationships and being able to um, advocate because ultimately, I mean, there's plenty of people who are willing to come down and, and scream and holler at us, but those who are willing to put a shoulder to the wheel when there's nobody around are few and far between. And those who do 
find themselves better positions to influence public policy. And, uh, you know, in the uh, Superintendent Borchers, uh, Randy Poe, uh, Henry Webb, some of these folks have really done that very effectively. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see our engagement in Frankfurt. Um, but I also want to set the record straight as it relates to Representative Banta, because I, I'll tell you this, anybody who thinks that Kim Van Banta votes some way because some man's going to tell her to do so has never met Kim Banta. Um, you know, she is as hard nosed of, a, of an individual as you want to come across. She was an, she was a very effective assistant superintendent in camp or I'm sorry, in Kitten County and uh, is widely respected in this community. And uh, the articles were, were just terrible about her in the spurious use of the ethics process by an interest group um, to try to tear her down was just disheartening um, because it's not what the process is about. And, you know, if, if every, you know, we're a part-time general assembly and most of us are married to somebody who's employed somewhere. If members of the general assembly had to recuse themselves every time it involved their occupation or that of the, their spouse, um, you, you'd see a lot of white spaces on that board when votes were cast. Um, but to back to your question, Michael, um, I don't look at this as if we are singled out in Northern Kentucky. I view this as a privilege. We're given a chance to prove that this is a workable concept in the Commonwealth, that the parents of Northern Kentucky uh, can have a choice in doing these things. And frankly, I think that a lot of, I, I, I foresee very few students from Ludlow going and taking advantage of this because of the types of things that Superintendent Borchers has been up to down there and, and, and because of the quality that they put out. But the fact is they will have a choice to do those things. And, and you know, there, there will be a chance for schools to tell their story. But, you know, to, to think that the Commonwealth does not have some type of this schooling already in place is ludicrous. Uh, we have public schools that take tuition students right now from outside of their districts. We have the model lab school down on Eastern Kentucky University's campus. We have Gatton Academy. We have the Craft Academy. Um, these types of school choice exper experiments do exist inside of the Commonwealth already. This is just another model. It's another tool. It's another opportunity for a more localized version of this. And I think that it will prove to be exceptionally um, successful and will prove to be something that raises the stakes or, or raises the opportunities, not for districts, but for children that we're called to serve in this. I, I want to talk more broadly about the way education is delivered in Northern Kentucky, particularly here in the urban core. First, let me reset and remind everyone you are watching the Frankfurt Link live from Lincoln KY. I'm Michael Monks, joined today by Lincoln KY politics and government reporter Mark Payne, who is in Frankfurt at the one in KY house. He's been reporting from Frankfurt throughout the duration of the 2022 General Assembly. We're also joined today by Ludlow Independent Schools Superintendent Mike Borchers and State Senator Chris McDaniel, Republican of Taylor Mill. I think we are waiting for State Senator Damon Thayer, Republican of Georgetown, to join us as well. And uh, although we might be having some technical issues on that respect, I'm getting messages now. So it, it might just be the four of us hanging out this evening. Me, yep. Senator McDaniel. <laughs> Every now and then the show does not go the way you'll expect, but the show, as they say, must go on. When you look at a map of school district superintendent borchers in Kentucky, you see a lot more dots in Northern Kentucky yep. than you do across the rest of the state. And I think of a school district like Ludlow and, and you certainly have your successes in Ludlow. Uh, we've been covering your school district for about a decade now and uh, talk a lot about what's gone on there and, and the efforts you've taken during the pandemic to keep your kids educated. But even geographically, there are some strange things that, that I see about it uh, in Ludlow. You know, your neighbors in, in Bromley are probably closer to Ludlow High School than they are to Dixie Heights High School. But by the way things are in Northern Kentucky, they're bust off to Dixie Heights. I think there are probably kids who live in West Covington mm -hmm. who are closer to Mary A. Getz Elementary School, but they're bust down to John G. Carlisle 
in Covington. And while you're having successes in Ludlow, perhaps John G. Carlisle is not. And sometimes it seems like opportunities for children in Northern Kentucky is based on geography. Could you help me understand? Well, I think there's the geography is part of it. I think there's a, a lot of dynamics that go on throughout a child's growth. Um, I would say when you when you talk about those two areas, Covington and Kenton County, and we've had our open enrollment policy for 25 years, ever since I've been in our district. So, you know, tuition and and, and all of those families that want to still have that choice is always they've always had that choice here. So, I, I don't know that 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 is a, an excuse anymore in our region. I think a lot of our families have way more choices. I think, you know, uh, Superintendent Garrison testified the other day, they have 250 some kids out of Covington that go to public schools beyond Covington and they have another 240 that go to private schools. So there is a lot of trans, trans, transition, a lot of changing of districts in our area. I think there is a lot of opportunity. What Senator McDaniel was talking about is another opportunity in, in, in their eyes with charter schools. Um, so I think, you know, Northern Kentucky is extremely um, unique, like you were saying, where they're, you know, if you live in you know, Bromley, you can walk to Ludlow or you can get on the bus and go to Kenton County. If you're in West Covington, you can walk down here to Ludlow or you can go to their schools there. So every kid in, in those scenarios have two chances to go to a public school for really no cost beyond what they normally would have. Um, we talk Bellevue, Dayton, Newport, all of the river cities. I think we have a lot of successes when you talk about not being successful. You know, there, there's a lot of different um, measures in one test. Um, you know, we, we talk about things, you know, now that the shift is going where 10 years ago it was straight ACT scores, Michael. And, you know, if you had an ACT score of, of X, they were going to be successful. Now the research is showing kids that are doing dual credit classes. So we have 80% of our kids taking dual credit classes. Covington, Newport, Bellevue, Dayton, we're all involved with Gateway uh, Community College to offer those opportunities. So we have a lot of good opportunities. We have to do a better job of creating more and more opportunities for kids. But um, I think the narrative that they don't have a chance to be successful just not there, but we have to do a better job of explaining that out to the public of what's going on with our kids. And I believe we are now also joined by State Senator Damon Thayer, the Republican floor leader of Georgetown, whose district currently includes part of Kenton County and all of Grant County as well. Uh, Senator Thayer, thank you for being with us this evening. Good evening, thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. We're also joined, of course, by your colleague, Senator Chris McDaniel of Taylor Mill and Mike Borchers, the Ludlow School Superintendent. Since you've just joined us, I was hoping perhaps you could share your perspective on uh, why you think House Bill 9 and charter school opportunities uh, are necessary, uh, particularly in Northern Kentucky. Well, I'm a big supporter of school choice. I think we should have vouchers. Let's go all the way. Uh, I'm for the educational opportunity scholarships that we passed last year. I'm for charters. I think kids should have choice outside of the traditional public school model that Mike was talking about. It's fine to have lots of schools, but I think that's kind of a bogus argument to be honest with you to say that just because there are a lot of schools in Northern Kentucky or there are a lot of schools in Louisville that we shouldn't have a charter school. We know at, for a fact that charter schools especially work well in inner cities across America and we should have one in Northern Kentucky. There will be kids who benefit from that. I'm a strong supporter of it. And frankly, after the budget that we just passed, I have no patience for public school advocates or superintendents complaining about charter schools. And I also better not ever hear them talk again about how they're underfunded. Uh, can you help us understand specifically how Louisville and Northern Kentucky were uh, targeted by the legislation? Uh, I didn't write the bill. It's Representative Chad McCoy's bill. But I think, uh, you know, Louisville has the worst performing public school district in the Commonwealth. They educate one in every six children uh, in the state. And it's an epic failure. And, you know, those of us who aren't from Louisville and some of the people from Louisville aren't going to stand idly by and let JCPS sort of monopolize the school system over there without having some choices. And there's a lot of uh, support, as you can see by the votes in our 
Northern Kentucky delegation for charters uh, in, in Northern Kentucky and for school choice. So that seemed like a good place to give it a try uh, up, up in Covington or Newport or someplace like that. And, and we will know to Senator Thayer's point among the Northern Kentucky uh, Legislative Caucus, uh, only three voted against it, both Democrats, Buddy Wheatley and Rachel Roberts voted against this legislation as did Representative Ed Massey of Hebron, the Republican who, who cast a vote against this legislation. And uh, uh, Senator Thayer, I know you're joining us from an event, so uh, we do appreciate you taking some time to, to talk to us. And if, if you need a place in order for some food, you go right ahead and uh, that, that's totally fine with us. I just I just want to get my bourbon order in. <laughs> well, I'm so do we. Event. I'm not <laughs> at an event. I'm not, I'm, I'm not at an event. I'm trying to have dinner with friends after working 15 of the last 17 days in Frankfurt. Uh, understandable. I think we're all anxious to have a little bourbon after this conversation as well. So thanks again. Uh, Mark Payne is the Lincoln KY politics and government reporter. I'd like to offer up the floor to you if you've got some questions for our guests this evening. Uh, yeah, so we've there's a couple specific points in that bill. Um, and I know when I talked to Randy Poe, um, the uh, executive director of the Northern Kentucky Education Council about them. Um, so this specific thing, um, there's one point in the bill that says um, school districts with 7,500 students, um, if a charter school were to come into a county with uh, where the makeup is under 7,500, a school district could veto it. But if the population of an independent school district in a county um, were over 7,500, that charter school could kind of come in. Um, there's only one county in Northern Kentucky that this applies to, um, and that's Kenton County. And so when we did our, our homework on this and we did our research on it, it looked like Ken Kenton County would be the likely home of a charter school in Northern Kentucky. Um, do Senator Thayer or uh, McDaniel have any insight to that? I can't say that I've got any insight into the numbers or, or things like that, but uh, clearly I think we should welcome it here. I would hope that it does land here, um, but I've got no particular insight into the, the drafting or decisions behind the, the way the numbers worked out. I think just to help clarify there, a very good question, Mark, I, it was something along the lines of the cumulative enrollment of all of the independent Correct. districts within a county, if they uh, exceed the number 7,500, then it, it, it appeared to be an easier path for a charter school to operate in that county, whereas if the en cumulative enrollment of independent districts was below 7,500, it would be a little more difficult an independent board of education could stand in the way of that. Kenton County, based on our count, has four independent school districts with cumulative enrollment um, among Covington, Beechwood, Ludlow, and Erlanger Ellesmere of over 9,000, whereas the five independent districts in Campbell County of Newport, Bellevue, Dayton, Fort Thomas, and Southgate are just over 6,500. Uh, Senator Thayer, can, do you have any insight on how that calculation uh, emerged? I know you said this was Representative McCoy's yeah, bill, but uh, anything you can help us uh, understand? <laughs> No, I mean, really, if you want to get into the details of the bill, you should have Chad McCoy on uh, on this program sometime. But I like it. I hope a charter school ends up in Kenton County. Uh, I represent uh, the southern portion of Kenton County, about 30,000 people. Unfortunately, due to the growth down here in Georgetown, I don't represent as much of Kenton County as I, as I used to. Uh, Senator McDaniel now has the great city of Taylor Mill in his district, and I'm going to miss representing it. But uh, they're, they're fortunate to have someone like Chris representing them. And I, I hope Kenton County does get a charter school. I think that'd be terrific. Something to be something to be proud of. Uh, Superintendent Borchers, let me return to you on this, because, I mean, you mentioned that you're that there is some variation of school choice in existence. I, I guess that's how you would characterize it. Um, and, and I guess students from outside the Ludlow district can they pay a little bit of tuition to come into Ludlow schools. Correct. Yes. Uh, what are you hearing from your fellow River City superintendents? Because these are the districts that, based on those metrics that, that you referenced before, a lot of the ACT scores, for example, the state testing, these are the schools that don't perform as well. Uh, Senator Thayer mentioned some Louisville schools are at the bottom. Of course, Louisville has some of the best schools in the state as well, but across the district, it also has some of the lowest performing by those metrics. But that is also true of Covington and Newport. 
Um, Bellevue is uh, among the lower scoring, but we have seen improvements in Ludlow. We have seen improvements in, in, in Dayton, but uh, Covington residents, Covington educators, Newport residents and educators have expressed some concerns about this. What are you hearing from your fellow superintendents here in the River Cities about HB9? Oh, I think first and all, any whether it's in Kenton County or Campbell County with the open enrollment and the open borders, uh, you'll have the availability of all students being able to leave districts to go to the charter. You could have kids in Southern Kenton County go there, Boone County, as long as they can get to the school. So it's not just totally going to be isolated to kids living along the River City. The, the physical building may be there, but um, it, it, anybody in the Northern Kentucky region could go to the this charter school. Um, you know, I, I think we're all just, you know, kind of waiting. We had 563 last year. And we so we wanted the school choice with that, where we did have some issues with some borders with some school districts. Uh, we haven't implemented that yet. That's still um, getting ready to be implemented this coming school year. So we're working through that. If I'm not mistaken, this will take a year or two to get into place. I think there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of decisions that would need to be made. Uh, Northern becomes a big player in this. And I think the way the bill's written, if Northern doesn't become the authorizer, then it goes to a committee of the district's within the county. So that'll be a big dynamic as well. So there's, there's still a lot to the process before anything like that gets in place. Um, so it's really hard to put your finger on it until you see who the authorizer is and how that goes about being implemented. Uh, Senator Thayer, a question from our audience. Uh, will anyone profit from charter schools? I, I, I'd have no idea, uh, but there's lots of people who profit every day from our public schools. There are private companies who sell supplies and build schools. And this, this whole narrative from the anti-school choice crowd uh, that someone shouldn't be allowed to make a profit, is it's just absurd. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if someone will make a profit or not. Uh, I, I suppose they could, but believe me, there are plenty of people profiting off our public schools in Kentucky every day. And I, can, I could get you a list, the people who build the schools, the people who sell them supplies, people who sell them food. I mean, come on, we live in a free market economy, but you know, these are government run schools and you know, they pay, we, we, we put 60% of our budget into education. And we just, we just had the best educational funding budget that, that we've seen in my time in Frankfurt because the economy's hot and receipts the government are up. So, really don't really have much patience for uh, any any of the complaints. Senator McDaniel, as I was just asking uh, our superintendent guest here, you know, there are there are nine independent school districts in Kenton and Campbell counties alone that are pretty close to one another, almost contiguous. And uh, there's an additional one in Boone County, of course, Walton, Verona. It's uh, emblematic of a lot of services that are that are offered to the public in northern Kentucky, fire districts, police departments, municipalities, and that sort of thing. Uh, I guess since we're talking about education specifically today, though, do you think that a charter school landing here as a proposed answer to perceived underperformance by existing districts is the result of perhaps the inefficiency of this number of independent school districts? Um, I don't think that one's necessarily linked to the other, Michael, but, but you did open a great door that I, I wanted to go, go down earlier. So if you'll, if you'll bear with me for a quick second here, um, the superintendent Borchers didn't Bromley have its own school back many, many years ago. Didn't they have their own school district? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it, so Michael, what happens when a school district folds by a combination of constitution and, um, law, they actually get absorbed by the county system um, that represent that, that, that um, services the county as a whole. Um, we dealt with this early in my career in the General Assembly. I think it was down in Monticello, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, there was a school district that basically went bankrupt, an independent school district that then had to be absorbed. I think Monticello maybe got absorbed by Wayne County or something like that. So you talk about the oddities of kids in, that are in Bromley going up to Dixie. That's why you have that happen, because an incorporated city without a district, the kids automatically get absorbed into the county school system. Um, so 
I just wanted to touch on that briefly. It's a great uh, story, like, actually. It was it, 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 it was the 1930s, Senator McDaniel, I believe, when uh, Bromley, the city that had its own independent district, asked Ludlow to take them in, and Ludlow told them no. And that's why, to this day, they're they're a part of the Kenton County school system. But I would have taken uh, it, Michael. Yeah, you well, wouldn't have to worry about that. <laughs> and, and most recently, but, I mean, of course, Senator, like we Silver saw Grove in uh, Silver Grove. Exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but uh, no, I mean, listen, the, the, um, the, the repetition of services that we have in northern Kentucky is tremendous. Um, and, and certainly we could use some consolidation. I'm not advocating for that right now. Um, but I don't necessarily think that consolidation would have for, foregone this. And, and you ask who profits from it, Michael. I'll tell you who I believe will profit from it is kids and families. Um, these choices will ultimately make everybody better. And that's who will profit from this. And I, and I look forward to them doing so. And you are watching the Frankfurt Link live from Link NKY. I'm Michael Monks, joined today by Link NKY politics and government reporter Mark Payne, who is in Frankfurt at the One NKY House. We're joined by state senators Damon Thayer, Republican of Georgetown, and Chris McDaniel, Republican of Taylor Mill, and Ludlow Independent Schools Superintendent Mike Borchers. We're going to talk about some other legislation here in our final minutes together. Uh, but before we say goodbye to Superintendent Borchers, who's been so kind and generous with his time today, um, Final thoughts from you about the state of education uh, in the 2022 General Assembly and um, I, I guess what, what you see Ludlow's benefit being. Well, I, I go back on just a couple of things. Uh, Senator McDaniel talked about working in the interim. You know, I would like to talk about when we had our school task force funding, our school funding task force, they came up with eight recommendations and four, four of the biggest recommendations were all in this budget. Um, full day kindergarten, transportation, funding for Frisky, and um, trying to get back to adequate funding as, as Senator Thayer mentioned about the SEEK funding being improved, Michael. I do think some of the things that have occurred, you know, I'll, I'll use Lono as an example when you talk about it, we're extremely appreciative for full day's kindergarten funding. That's still in the budgets. So one, one of the problems that, for, that works for me is that money that we could use that we've done in the past for full day funding until we get that codified, that's, that's money that's hard to put in reoccurring costs because if the next budget cycle doesn't have full day funding, I have to be able to have the money in, on reserve to do the full day funding. So those are some hiccups that, that I think working together with legislators in the past and the future is a big goal of ours, whether it's Ludlow or all the state superintendents. Um, you know, I want to, just when you talk about Lola, we're, we're willing to be competitive with anybody, and, and I don't have any problem with that. Um, I would push back a little bit on some of the local funding going with the kids to a charter school, and we, we don't want to get into a bait, but that's just my, my opinion, and some things we'll agree to disagree on. But overall, as I said earlier in the program, all educators should be extremely happy with where we're at, is, we, is with any kind of... Um, you know, when you have a back and forth, as we all know, that it has to happen. The two gentlemen here, every every bill they deal with, is is a coming of a collaboration and an agreement where one group or one side wants one thing and one wants the other, and they meet in the middle. So we've been met in the middle on a lot of really good things, and we're like Senator McDaniel said, this is my twelfth year as superintendent through general assembly meetings, and it's the first year that we've ever gone through a general assembly without having to worry about where we were cutting. And it was a matter of being able to add, and we're all very, very appreciative of that. So I don't want anybody to walk away thinking that all educators or, or that we're not appreciative, because we are very appreciative. Um, the one bill or the one item that's probably a little difficult is the House Bill 9, and we'll work through it whether whatever we have to do. Um, we have opinions on that as well. And um, you know we'll move forward with it. And um, for Ludlow schools, we're extremely appreciative of the General Assembly for the funding that they put in to the um, facilities. Uh, Senator Thayer helped, helped educators work on House Bill 678, which is gonna make KDE more efficient in the building process. So we all are able to work together. Sometimes it seems like we don't because there's one topic, but overall, it's been a very good session. Um, I feel like the General Assembly, especially Senator McDaniel in the budgets, listen to some of our concerns and needs, especially Lolo and especially the state. And they've, they've done a really good job with that. So 
I'd like to thank both of these gentlemen again and, you know, move forward and I'll be ready to work with them again come next fall and next spring. So we're very happy where we're at. We would like more as anybody would, and, and, uh, but we're very appreciative where we're at and we're not going to be complaining tonight. That's Ludlow Independent Schools Superintendent Mike Borchers. Go Panthers, Superintendent Borchers. Thanks so much for being with us this evening. I'm sure we'll see no you problem. at a board meeting soon. Okay, thank you, Michael. And staying with us are the state senators, Chris McDaniel and Damon Thayer. Uh, Senator McDaniel, you and I have talked on programs many times, so you know a topic that I want to address before Senator Thayer leaves us. So as my state senator, Senator McDaniel, uh, would you mind just asking the question for me to Senator Thayer about... Uh, a certain plant. <laughs> a sir, a sir, oh, the, 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 you, you mean the tree that was out back that we finally <laughs> shook this year that's going to bring us the Brent Spence Bridge without tolls? Uh, perhaps. I guess that might be the, the mystery plant. Uh, <laughs> Senator Thayer, it looks like uh, the, the medical cannabis legislation is dead. Uh, is, is that a fact? I, I'm sorry, you are muted. But you barely knew it. Yes. And do we expect that perhaps the, uh, the, the did the legislation from That's Representative Moser that would have, I guess, created a mechanism to further study that, did that pass your body as well, the Senate? Not yet, but uh, that's something we hope to take up when we get back on April 13th and 14th. We need more research. We need more studies. We need more information uh, before we go down that road. And, you know, look, we just don't have the votes to pass it. I'm sort of tired of talking about it. Um, you know, there's, this was a great session. I mean, we've given more money to schools than we have in a long time. Uh, we're we're going to cut the personal income tax rate. We ended the state of emergency. Uh, we passed charter schools. Uh, we passed a bill that, two bills that will help stabilize our two signature industries, horse racing and bourbon. Oh, and just like that, our drinks show up. Couldn't have timed it any better. Thank you. So cheers to House Bill 500, which will allow the bourbon industry to continue to grow. House Bill 670, uh, which will help the horse racing business continue to grow. We're, uh, once the new turfway opens up, we're less than two years away from having the, the best year round purses in North America. A lot of great things that we passed uh, and everybody wants to focus on two things that aren't cannabis, which I'm not for and sports betting, which I'm for. Uh, and I'd say, you know, neither one of those are going to pass this session. And that's just the way it is. Like the old Rolling Stones song says, you can't always get what you want. Well, Senator Thayer, that was going to be my last question to you was uh, to give you the opportunity to talk about what you saw as highlights in this legislative session. So I think you've done that for us. And it looks like you're anxious to enjoy your drink and your friends on this evening. So let me just say we appreciate the time you gave us this evening. And if, if you want to dip out and, and go enjoy the rest of your evening, by all means, do. Thank you. And I, I want to thank uh, Link NKY for being a news source in northern Kentucky. You know, when I when I first moved to Kentucky 30 years ago this fall, we had two daily newspapers, the Inquirer in the morning and the Post in the afternoon, and now there's no Post and the Inquirer barely acts like we exist. So I do appreciate uh, this opportunity to, to, to have a communication with constituents in Northern Kentucky and appreciate your guys' work and hope you continue to expand. I'm always, always going to try to make myself available to your programming. Well, we will certainly reach out again. Thanks again, Senator. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. And Senator McDaniel, before you run, uh, let's talk some specific items for Kenton County. I mean, this was a pretty significant session for our region. And, and like Senator Thayer said, yes, there are some issues that do catch people's attention uh, and, and create passionate responses more than others. But, but we can talk about a certain bridge that I think a lot of us are bored of talking about. But my goodness, uh, pretty significant movement on that front this year. Yeah, you know, so... Uh... We, we did have a good session uh, as a region, and uh, it, it's because we've got a lot of people up here, uh, starting with Judge Nachman, uh, who really uh, recognized that in some way we're all cogs in, in, in a larger machine, and we work together very well, and we were able to do good things. Um, 
you know, like uh, Superintendent Borchers referenced, uh, we've got a, a school for Ludlow this time around. Covington has a LAVEC that they're a local area vocational school that they're going to get. Uh, we've got the wet layout coming to Covington. We got the money for the Brent Spence Bridge. Um, we've got money coming for Dixie Highway. We've got all day kindergarten. South Bank's getting money. Um, there, there's going to be money for industrial development in the south end of Kenton County coming in. Um, you know, a big ticket item that, that doesn't just uniquely affect Kenton County, but sets the state up to be able to move businesses in is we put a bunch more money into the state's pension system. Um, and so consequently, it eliminates that uncertainty. I mean, we have, you know, 10 years ago, we heard regularly that businesses, one of the things that scared them was we had this huge unfunded pension liability and everybody knows you have a certain level of obligation. And when that's teetering on the brink the way it was, businesses had to look at us and say, this is a potential future tax increase waiting to happen. And because we finally got that under control and we got some really good ratings from Standard and Poor's this year, um, we're beginning to create more stability in that space. And so, I mean, yeah, I mean, gosh, the, the region did have a very good session and I'm very appreciative of the judge and of our mayors and, and our superintendents and their partnership um, to let us go down there and, and, and do, do the best we could uh, on their behalf. And I'll give our last question this evening to my good buddy, Mark Payne, Lincoln KY politics and government reporter. Nail him, Mark, nail him. <laughs> no, uh, one of my questions was just going to be, I, I had a conversation with Representative Koenig earlier, and I know that his goal over the veto period is to work on uh, House Bill 606, which is the sports betting bill. But I think Senator Thayer gave an answer as to what he thinks is going to happen with uh, 606. Um, but no, um, the big thing, the other big thing that I reported on this week was the funding for the Brent Spence. Um, House Bill 9, you know, was a big uh, ticket item this week. Um, but I've spent a lot of time talking with Senator McDaniel. I know we've had conversations about, because I know for, for a while there that the money wasn't add, adding up for the Brent Spence Bridge, but I've got a lot of clarification this week. Um, there's 250 million that's coming from the House and Senate budget that's gonna be used for it. The Senate budget initially had 2 million, but when I talked to Senator McDaniel earlier this week, you know, they settled on the higher number uh, for the 250 million in matching funds. Um, and then obviously the house biennial uh, construction budget um, puts that um, project over the threshold. Um, Representative Santoro, who worked really hard on House Bill 224, which is that, or 242, I apologize, which is the uh, biennial traffic construction bill for the house. Um, he's, you know, he said that Kentucky's gonna put 1.3 billion forward um, and that would put the project over the finish line. Okay, well, Mark, thank you for that recap. And you can read Mark's reporting at lincolnky.com and click on that Kentucky tab and see all the excellent reporting from Frankfurt. It's been great having a Northern Kentucky reporter based in Frankfurt for the duration of the session. Uh, Senator McDaniel will give you the last word here. Uh, what do you think the biggest highlight is of the 2022 legislative session? Um, I think just the fact that we are finally, after a decade uh, or longer of trying in a position of greater stability than we've ever seen. Um, it's taken a lot of hard work. This is the first budget we have that we haven't had to cut, but we finally got there. And as you noted, uh, Northern Kentucky may have done better this legislative session than we've done in decades. Um, it really, um, like I say, I can't speak highly enough of the local elected officials, the way they let us go down there and help us and support us. And, um, you know, the, the great Northern Kentucky delegation that we have. And uh, it, frankly, Michael, uh, importantly, you guys have a presence down there now. Um, that is big. Um, you guys and a fair and unbiased source of reporting is a critical component to free society. And I was so thankful that Mark was down there um, for better and for worse. Uh, you know, but that's part of being fair as part of being up the middle. And I wish you guys great success because you are important to, to the functioning of our government. Well, thank you, Senator McDaniel. We will note that your Republican caucus did start taxing our digital subscriptions a few years ago. So we, <laughs> <laughs> we might have a bone to pick with that on another day. But Senator McDaniel, thanks for always making. But your income money. tax is going down. <laughs> I hope you're making income at this. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Certainly are. Thank you, Senator. We appreciate you being with us this evening.
And you've been watching the Frankfurt Link live from Link NKY. Mark Payne is our Link NKY politics and government reporter. I'm Michael Monk's chief content officer. Be sure to go to linknky.com every day for all of Northern Kentucky's news. You can sign up for the Daily Link and get our morning email blast with the top headlines in your inbox every single morning. And don't forget to check out the Kentucky Side podcast, deep conversations, fun conversations all about Northern Kentucky. If you love podcasts or just good conversation, check out the Kentucky side. For Mark Payne, I'm Michael Monks. Go to linkinky.com. Thanks for watching this evening. We'll talk again soon.